just one technical issue, this should be a double-headed arrow because this is resonance, not a reaction. That might seem trivial, but it's actually important to distinguish between reactions and resonance. This first step here was, a, was an actual chemical reaction. So we used a single-headed arrow, whereas this was just resonance, so we used a double-headed arrow. What's the difference? Well, in resonance, all we're doing is moving the pi electrons around inside a single molecule. All we're doing here is moving these pi electrons around inside this molecule, so this is just resonance. And as we've discussed, either of these would be a correct picture of this molecule. You don't need to draw both of them. Either of them is correct. Why, why isn't this resonance? Because we're actually moving an atom around. We're moving the atom from the oxygen to this base. If you're actually moving atoms around, that's an actual chemical reaction. But if you're simply moving pi electrons around inside the molecule, a single molecule, that's resonance. So it's good to use different arrows for that. This confirms the explanation you gave a second ago. This negative charge is stabilized by resonance. How do we stabilize charges? By spreading them out. How do we stabilize charges by spreading them out? Well, this is spread out between not just this oxygen, but this oxygen as well, whereas there's no resonance structures over here. Incidentally, we were saying before that these are, both of these, the oxygens have the most acidic protons in the molecule, even though we acknowledged that there's a lot of protons on the carbons as well. How do we know that the proton, say, on this oxygen is more acidic than the proton in any of the carbons? Well, if the oxygen loses a proton, then the oxygen gets a negative charge. Whereas if a carbon loses a proton, then the carbon gets a negative charge. But who would rather, who, can, who is better able to stabilize a negative charge, a carbon or an oxygen? Well, the oxygen is going to be better able to stabilize the negative charge. Um, and that's the explanation for why this is the acidic proton in this alcohol. We know it's not very acidic, but it's more acidic than these carbons over here. So it all comes down to, if you want to see how acidic something is, draw what it would look like after it loses the proton. We actually draw what it looks like after it loses the proton and ask, how well is it stabilizing that charge? If it's stabilizing the charge well, then it was easy to lose the proton in the first place. And if it's not stabiliz stabilizing the charge very well, it would have been difficult to lose the proton in the first place. In most cases, this reaction wouldn't even happen because it's too hard to stabilize this negative charge afterwards. So by the way, this is a carboxylic acid. What could we call this? Well, we could call it a deprotonated carboxylic acid, but another name for this would be a carboxylate. I mentioned in the other video series that any time your final product is a carboxylic acid, you actually have to decide whether the final product should be a carboxylic acid or a carboxylate. Under neutral or acidic conditions, the final product would be a carboxylic acid. But under basic conditions, we can see the final product should deprotonate to form a carboxylate. So this is what we would call a carboxylate. Usually there would be some counter ion stabilizing this negative charge. For example, this is what we would call sodium carboxylate or a sodium carboxylate salt. Salts are just another name for an ionic compound. So the name for this would be sodium carboxylate. Or this would be potassium carboxylate. By the way, another base that we might use to deprotonate the carboxylic acid is ammonia. We might use ammonia to do the deprotonation. Ammonia is not a strong base. It doesn't have a negative charge, but it's strong enough to deprotonate a carboxylic acid. What would the ammonia look like after it takes the proton? It would uh, be NH4 plus. Now, it's really good that you saw they don't have a positive charge. If we start with a neutral base, then after it loses these electrons, it becomes positive. So now what would be the name for this? Well, now we wouldn't call this sodium carboxylate or potassium carboxylate anymore. Now this would be called ammonium carboxylate. That's a name that I think your instructor wants you to know. Okay. And yeah. then that's not a salt. It's Actually, I think this would be considered a salt because, again, it's an ionic compound. Salt is roughly synonymous with ionic compound. So you have, and this would also be considered a salt. When you watched the, the video on the uh, attack of amines and aldehydes and ketones, I think it talked about how this is what's called an ammonium ion. Okay. NH3 would be ammonia, but NH4 plus is ammonium. So this would be called an ammonium carboxylate salt.
I, I think you saw before I was just using B to indicate some generic base that I'm not specifying. And I was assuming that it was negative. But if we use ammonia, it starts out neutral, so then it ends up positive. I think you're probably going to see on your exams now are questions that ask you to rank things in order of acidity. So let's try ranking these compounds in order of acidity. So you wrote out the structures, and yeah, it's increasing in acidity. OK, very good. That's the right answer. You said that this was the most acidic. So I guess we could call it number one. And this would be two, three. And this would be four, the least acidic. And what's your explanation? Why is this compound more acidic than this compound? Because of the presence of the uh, electronegative atom uh, chloride. Good. How does the chlorine make this more acidic than this? It can better stabilize a negative charge. Good. And how does it stabilize the negative charge? That's a good explanation. Remember, it's a good, uh, if you needed to give a full explanation, you would probably want to actually write what this would look like after it's deprotonated. After it's deprotonated, this compound would look like this. Remember, how do we stabilize charges? Well, one great way is by spreading them out. Well, is this, um, that is, we don't want the, this negative charge to be concentrated on the oxygen. We want it to be spread through the whole molecule. Well, is this chlorine going to be pushing electron density towards the oxygen or pulling it away? As I think you saw, it's going to be pulling the electron density away from the oxygen, which tends to spread this over the whole molecule. Good. We know that one thing that stabilizes this negative charge is it's stabilized by resonance. But that doesn't help us because all of these would have negative charges stabilized by resonance. But this negative charge is also stabilized by induction. The way that the chlorine is pulling the negative charge through its electronegativity is called an induction effect. Actually, I think most people are already pretty comfortable using induction as an explanation. What they need to start learning is how to use resonance, but we should be looking for both of those. That was good. Well, then why should this be more acidic than number three? there's uh, uh, another electronegative atom. Yeah. Right. So, so you have even, mm -hmm. it's pulling even stronger, yeah. I guess you could say. It'll be more, even more effective at pulling the negative charge away from the oxygen. And then, logically speaking, this would be the most effective because this has the most electron pulling power away from the oxygen. Good. Incidentally, this is called acetic acid. That's the common name. Or ethanoic acid. That would be the IUPAC name. 
Can you see how these names are logical? This is called F because it has two carbons, and the suffix for carboxylic acids is oic acid. The common name, though, here is acetic acid. 